Two mental health units have been named and shamed by the Chief Ombudsman for what he describes as degrading, cruel or inhuman treatment. Te Whare o Matairangi Mental Health Unit at Wellington Hospital was routinely putting patients in so-called exclusion rooms, stark, sparsely furnished isolation rooms that are only supposed to be used for short periods of time and for patients who are an imminent safety risk. And Waitakere Hospital's Waiatoro Mental Health Inpatient Facility is also using its intensive care unit as long-term accommodation for patients who shouldn't be in there. Joining me now is the Chief Ombudsman, Judge Peter Bosher. Good evening. Can we Good evening, Lisa. Can we start with the Waitakere unit first? How would you describe the treatment of patients in the intensive care unit? In a word, unacceptable. Uh, the reason that we have sheeted home a breach of Article 16 of the Convention that binds all mental health facilities is because you just can't contain someone in the intensive care unit of uh, a facility like this for five months in the way in which um, it occurred. It's just not right. It's not acceptable. It's not humane. We've, we've talked time and time again about the need for mental health facilities in New Zealand to operate in a better way, and now we're beginning to get more terse, more strident, and say that there needs to be change in some of these facilities. When you say more terse and more strident, you're naming and shaming them. You don't always do that, do you? That you, that's quite correct, and, and it's time now, particularly in relation to those where we've made recommendations up until now, and they've been accepted but not implemented. What is the Ombudsman to do but to be increasingly requiring of accountability? Otherwise, I think the public will lose confidence in the fact that we can achieve. And we've got to be able to keep the public's confidence that we really do lead to change. So the intensive care unit at the Waitakere facility, they're, they're supposed to be units where there is rehabilitation and then reintegration. So in terms of the patients that were there, I mean, how long were people staying there? Well, the, the particular one that we centred on, can I give you uh, a visual picture? An ICU, an intensive care unit, is meant to be for an acute short-term stay. It's stark. You're contained. You can't go out. You're there. And it's usually there short-term because you're deprived of the other sort of programs and outreach that normal mental health patients who are recuperating, uh, recuperating have the advantage of. You're cooped up, contained, almost detained, for five months in this case. Now, that is, in our view, uh, a breach because it is humane. It's just not a facility ever built for this length of time. And it, by the way, it's not just that particular patient that we centred on. There was another patient in the acute unit, not an ICU, but in the acute unit, who had been there for 344 days. That's nearly a year. And the reason? Because seemingly they don't have their act together in putting in place good transition into the community. Uh, and that's what we should be trying to aim for with our mental health patients, socialising them back into normality in the community. You had one other service user in there for that, in that unit for 621 days, and it says they uh, had no appre approved leave. So... What does that mean? No outside contact. And, and also, it seems, no staff to even give patients a one-hour-a-week escorted walk. Yes, and, and in fact, I think that we might be conflating the same patient. The, the, the patient who was there for 600 days spent five months of those in the ICU. That's the part that we're particularly critical of because of the lack of, of any ability to do the sort of therapeutic things that we should be doing in a mental health facility. The question might be asked, well, how on earth does someone spend two, 600 days in the acute unit of a mental health facility? Why isn't there a transition and a plan into the community? And that's the question that we really need to have answered by this facility. Why hasn't it done it? So there is also a seclusion room in this facility. So that's, again, a sparsely uh, furnished, if you could call it furnished, usually a mattress on the floor. Do you remember what they were using? There were no um, ensuite bathrooms in their seclusion room. What were they using for toileting? 
Well, can we talk about toileting? Um, and I know it's unsavoury, so I won't descend into micro detail, but there's no point in pussyfooting over this. It's, it's pretty uncivilised, degrading stuff. This, these are not prisoners who some might think should be taught a lesson. These are people, they could be friends or relatives of ours who, through no fault of theirs, uh, need mental health intervention. So, for instance, in Matarangi in Wellington, our objection there, which gave rise to a further breach, was that they were routinely putting patients in seclusion rooms instead of bedrooms and places like TV lounges and so on, where there is no privacy. And then we, we do need to talk about these blessed cardboard receptacles that were being used as toilets uh, when some other facilities manage to do proper on sweeting in a safe, secure and dignified fashion. And the problem is that there was the ability in some of these rooms, particularly the rooms being used for seclusion, for passers-by just to see the most private things that people were doing. Not very civilised, is it? No, it's not. And in fact, well, one argues, well, one does, is it barbaric? Well, we're very careful in the words that we use so that we are not seen as overstepping. So we haven't said that any of this amounts to torture because that's got a specific definition in the convention. Barbaric is, is probably too emotive for me. But look, degrading and inhumane are apt expressions in particularly both Matairangi and uh, Waiata Row. And yet, Lisa... To provide balance, when we looked at one in Timaru called Kensington and Tumanako in Whangarei, both acute units, one having 12 beds and the other uh, 29, particularly in Timaru, Kensington was the exemplar. I just wish that those that aren't getting it right could look to those who are and learn and improve and change. It's at the moment a lottery. If you are unfortunate to be unwell, in some parts of the country, uh, you get grade C service, it seems, and if you're fortunate to be in other areas, you get grade A. I know you don't want to dwell on this, but when we're talking about the toilet facilities, we're talking about basically a cardboard box for people to toilet in, aren't That's we? That's correct. Yes, we are. And, and that's the complete bodily functions. It's not just urinating, it's defecating as well. It's unsavoury to talk about, but this is smelly stuff and it's um, I don't find it pleasant And it's undignified, should our most vulnerable be treated in this way? That They shouldn't uh, and again can I repeat to the point of, of overstating this how is it that, that some facilities get it right and, and shine the light and do it properly so that someone who goes into a mental health facility who's unwell feels because of the dignity that, that life is worth living and that they want to change, but if they're not treated with that degree of dignity um, and light, I, I think it, it must only lead to them being slower in having an ability to recover and recuperate. Judge Bosher, should we have seclusion rooms at all? Because I know the Health Quality and Safety Commission, a government agency, wanted zero use of seclusion rooms by 2020, and a lot of mental health advocates think that they are an outdated tool. Is it right to have them at all? I think that we've seen with seclusion rooms a trend away from them. I'll answer your question in this way. You may recall in the past we've discussed what used to happen in the, in the education setting where seclusion rooms were used for autistic children who were thought to be misbehaving and violent. And it was said at the time, you must have seclusion rooms because you've got to keep others safe. There are ways in which you can keep the patient safe and others safe by proper managing. If we are going to have seclusion rooms, there should be tight management, short stays, and a real emphasis on a therapeutic outcome, not a punitive one. Appreciate your time this evening. That is Judge Peter Bosher, our Chief Ombudsman.